Hey guys, welcome back to another video today. I hope you guys are all having a great day. First off, this is the first video I'm uploading with my new camera, the Canon M50, which means I'm not going to be a master with all the settings and everything, so hopefully it looks okay, um, but just let me know down below. But today, I am back with another EpoMaker keyboard, the AK61. If you guys are unfamiliar, I recently reviewed the SK61, also from EpoMaker, and I absolutely loved it. So now I'm here with its, I guess you could call it sister keyboard, we'll talk about why in a second, but because I did love the SK61, K61, I have pretty high expectations for this one. And also because these keyboards are so similar, I will be using the SK61 as sort of a comparison keyboard throughout this entire video. So if you are not familiar with the SK61, I do have a video right up here. But now that you have a little bit of background knowledge, let's check out the AK61. Before that, guys, I just want to mention the EpoMaker end of the year sales event going on on their website from December 25th through January 1st, better known as Christmas through New Year's Day. If you are looking for an EpoMaker keyboard or even a mouse, then this is definitely the time to get one. There will be anywhere from 15 to 50% off selected products for a limited time. However, that's not all. There will also be multiple events, including giveaways, the main giveaways being two mystery giveaways where you actually don't know the product you could win, but it will be pretty awesome. On the website, it'll tell you how to enter and one winner will be drawn on Christmas, which this video is not going to be up in time for, but don't worry, there's another winner drawn on New Year's Day or January 1st. This is definitely the best sale on EpoMaker products throughout the entire year, so you're not going to want to miss it. If you guys want to participate, it'll be the first link down below, as well as the link for the EpoMaker AK61. But guys, back to the video. So the first thing I kind of want to go over is how this keyboard relates to the SK61. First though, big thanks to EpoMaker for sending out this keyboard. So pretty much there's two versions of this keyboard and the SK61. There's just the standard 61 for each, AK61 and SK61. And then there's also the 61S, so SK61S and AK61S. So I couldn't actually find an Amazon listing for the AK61 non-S, but I did, however, find the AK61S when I selected a different color on the page for the SK61S. And the color is actually called AK61S. So this pretty much leads me to believe that the SK61S and AK61S are pretty much the same keyboard, just with a few minor tweaks. And I'm assuming it's the same for the non-S models. So anyway, let's start with an unboxing and see if these minor tweaks are actually improvements. So for the unboxing process, I guess I'll start out by saying the box looks super clean, if that's something you care about, but you'll also notice it's the same box as the SK61, which is another reason I believe these keyboards are pretty much siblings. Once the keyboard is out though, you'll find the cable, which is braided and pretty nice, although I do wish it were a little longer. It's also USB-C, which is always a plus. You'll find the keycap puller, the key switch puller, because this keyboard is hot swappable, but I'll talk about that later. And you also get some replacement keycaps to replace the Mac keycaps that come on the keyboard out of the box. And yes, this keyboard is for Mac and Windows, but like everything else, I'll talk about that later. Also, as I mentioned earlier, there is no Amazon page for this specific model, the AK61, but there is one on EpoMaker's website, which will also be linked down below. So now for switch and color options. I'm not going to talk about the switches yet, just kind of go over the options. So for color, there's only one. However, I think it's probably the color most people would go with anyway. It's mostly white, with the keys on the edges being black to add some contrast, and the escape key is also red adding even more contrast. For the switches, there's Gateron Optical Blacks, Blues, Browns, or Reds. They are optical switches, not just normal switches. So stay tuned for when I actually talk about those because there's a little bit more to them than it actually seems. So now for the build quality. And some of you guys probably recognize this case from the SK61 video, and that's because it's the same one. So if you did catch that video, you'll know that I like it. It's built really well and has super clean edges that add to the clean look of the entire keyboard. The case offers zero flex or bend, which is great, and it's built super solid. And I also really like the slight roundness on the corners. Again, it just adds to the clean look. There's also a six degree incline built into it, just so typing is more ergonomic and comfortable. However, just like with the SK61, I wish there was like one or two more degrees added to the incline, just because that's what most keyboards are, seven or eight degrees. So I'm kind of used to that. However, I got used to the six degree incline very fast and it's really not a problem anymore. You could also get a wrist rest or something if it was really a big problem. Flipping the keyboard over, you can see there's four rubber feet, one in each corner, to prevent the keyboard from sliding around. Now, while that can't be raised, remember the frame already comes built in with that height. The only problem is you can't type with the keyboard completely flat on your desk. But who does that anyway? On the back, there's also a USB-C port, not micro USB, which is great to see. Flipping a keyboard back over, you'll see the keycaps, the things you are looking at all the time. So to like the keyboard, you'll probably have to think they're good. 
and to me, they are, but there's a lot to unpack here. So these keycaps are actually where the keyboard starts to get a little different from the SK-61, but there's still some similarities. Firstly, like the SK-61, the AK-61 is rocking thermal sublimation keycaps made of a PBT material. They look really nice, but they're not double shot, meaning no shine through. Now, if this is a deal breaker for you, just pick up some HyperX pudding keycaps, but if it's not, then you'll probably like them. So if you guys remember from the SK-61 video, the keycaps on that keyboard kind of make like a half-hearted attempt to try to be shine through, and it doesn't really work, and I didn't really like it. What they did was they made the top half of the keyboard slightly thinner so that some of the light could sneak through. Although that didn't really work, and it kind of just made like an orange glow on only some of the keycaps. The other ones, you just couldn't even tell. Point is though, it just didn't look that good. Well, if you're like me and didn't like that, you'll be happy to hear that these keycaps don't try to do it at all. This does mean that it may be slightly harder to type in the dark, but it's not like there's no RGB, and you still should be able to see the letters just fine. The font is also super simple and perfectly sized, which seems to be a theme among EpoMaker products. However, the text, for the letters at least, is in the upper left-hand corner of the keycaps, compared to the SK-61, where they're in the middle. You may not like this, but personally, it doesn't really affect me, because the font is really all I care about. Some of the keycaps also have their secondary functions listed on them, which throws off the clean look slightly, but it'll definitely improve quality of life, so it's kind of a trade-off, but I'll let you guys pick which one you want. Also, I'm sure you've noticed this, and I've already mentioned it, but the larger keycaps are black for some contrast, and the escape key is red. Because of this, it kind of makes the keyboard look like a custom keyboard, which is something I love about EpoMaker keyboards. However, the largest difference between these keycaps and the ones found on the SK-61 is that they're different profiles. From the looks of it, these keycaps are MDA profile, which are kind of short and fat compared to, for example, the Cherry profile, which are more square-like. I can't really tell if this affects the typing experience, but for me at least, I think the travel feels kind of shorter. It's probably just in my head though. Also labeled on the W and E keys are the different modes you can switch between while using the function button, which is what I'll talk about now. So like I mentioned earlier, this keyboard is kind of built for Mac users and window users. The W and E keys are used with the function button to switch modes so you can switch between the correct actions for Windows or for Mac. Depending on the mode you select, the correct action will be completed. If I'm on the Mac mode and I hit the Windows button, nothing will happen, unless I switch back to Windows mode, and the other way around as well. There are also some other functions you should know, like your typical volume controls, playback controls, RGB controls, and you also still get the arrow keys, which I love. The only functions that are actually listed on the keycaps are really the only important ones, so if you need to take a screenshot or something not as important, just refer to the manual. So once again, we've reached probably the most important part of this review, and something that will make or break the entire keyboard, and that is the switches. So the sample I have here is rocking Gateron Optical Blue switches. However, don't confuse these with just regular Gateron Blues, because they're not the same. Because these switches are optical, it means that they're actuated by the stem breaking up a beam of light in the switch housing that'll send a signal to your PC it was just actuated. And because of this, it will be able to actuate faster, but I'm pretty sure it's physically impossible to tell any difference from a normal contact switch. But because these switches are optical, it means you get a hot swappable PCB, but the only other switches you can swap in are Gateron optical switches. So it would just make more sense to buy the switches you want right off the bat. But what I mean is your Gateron black inks and novel keys cream switches won't work because of the pins needed for their actuation. But back to Gateron optical blue, I think they feel really good. I know I said in the SK61 review that the click feels a little cheaper, but it's actually grown on me now and I really like it. Another important part of the typing experience though is the stabilizers, and they do appear to be lubed, although not as much lube as on the SK61. This does mean that a little rattle is present, mostly in the space bar, but it's not bad and definitely bearable. And now you'll be able to hear the stabilizers and the switches in a sound test.
So, other just random things about the keyboard that may be important are as follows. As you can see, the keyboard does have RGB, although I would say it's a little dim at its full brightness, but still looks really good, and there are a few different effects. There's also a software, which unfortunately I didn't get a chance to download, but I know you can do things like choose which lighting profiles are saved on the keyboard and change the RGB effect and stuff like that, but you also have functions for those things. So it's kind of like, what's the point? And the keyboard is also IP6X water and dust resistant, but I wasn't gonna take any chances. So guys, that's pretty much it for this keyboard, and I've definitely enjoyed it. However, I hope you guys enjoyed it too, as well as this video. If you did enjoy it, a sub and a like would be massively appreciated. And I do have another Epo Maker keyboard coming soon, as well as some setup videos. As you can see, it's a little different right now. So if you don't want to miss those, hit the post notifications and uh, just keep watching. They'll be up soon. If you guys do have any questions about this keyboard, just leave them in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to respond to you. But guys, with that, I hope the new camera looks okay and I'll catch you guys in the next one.